What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. Today, I want to talk about what it actually takes to move past being a junior developer. We all strive to do this one day, so what does it take? What practices should you start now to achieve this? What skills do you need? Well, today I'm going to give you five tips to consider to help you progressively move towards the mid to senior level one day. Let's get started. So let's take a look here at this comment that I came across on Reddit. I thought it was interesting. This person, whoever it is, has an interesting comment. They split junior and senior titles into lower and upper halves. So you have a junior junior and a senior junior, and you have a junior senior and a senior senior. A junior junior is given a problem and told how to solve it. A senior junior is given a problem and can figure out how to solve it. So in this junior level, you're going from being told how to solve a problem that you've been given to being able to figure out how to solve it yourself, even though the problem was given to you. And then in the senior level, the junior senior can identify the problem and solve it. So they're not being given a problem, they can identify it and solve it. And then the senior senior has been burned before and avoids the problem altogether. I thought that was really good, but it's actually more than just solving problems. And many think moving past this junior developer skill level is all knowledge-based, that you need to have deep knowledge in many different technologies, but that's not the case. So let's get started with these five. First, and this is so important, it's uncontrollable, and it's a kind of precursor to the rest of the action items I'm gonna give you. And it's this, you have to realize upfront that it just takes time. It just takes time to learn and become a well-rounded mid to senior level developer. I've met many new-ish developers rushing to get a promotion. And I'm like, why? Other than money, why? What, what's your rush? You don't have the leadership, you don't have the experience or the knowledge to be one yet. You need to spend time, weeks, months, maybe even years in the trenches to get there. And you know, if you're a new developer in the industry, you're just trying to keep up. You're trying to get tasks done. You're dealing with imposter syndrome. And then on top of that, you want to take on more experienced roles. So as the years progress in this junior phase, you'll learn how to code better and cleaner, and you'll start to see code bases in a grander view. You'll start to see the bigger picture. You'll also find yourself with the ability to unblock others by pair programming or giving advice. Your knowledge will deepen, and you'll finally get out of that desperation mode that every new developer is in. Instead of thinking you know nothing at all, like we all start out thinking, you'll begin to push forward in active contribution instead of always reacting to the next challenge. So just remember first and foremost that you need to give it time. Enjoy this phase in the trenches. It's there to build you up. It's there to mature you into this next role. You need this. I mean, books are good. Training is good. I'm not telling you to neglect that, but experience in this field is the golden ticket. You need to break things. You need to get into trouble and then find your way out of that trouble. But like I said, this phase is uncontrollable. So during this time, how do you make the most of it? Well, that's what the next four tips revolve around. So let's move on to number two. Number two is that you need to develop your soft skills. To become a mid to senior developer, you need to develop your soft skills. Soft skills are the non-technical skills that every successful person needs to take their place in the corporate world or the freelance world or the self-employed world, whatever. And it involves good communication, decision-making, team cooperation, dependability, confidence, etc. Senior developers, they're known for being able to talk to managers and stakeholders in a way that makes sense and reassures and solves problems. They are decision makers and they can handle when stressful situations come. As a junior developer, you're not in the key meetings. You're not going to be invited and probably you wouldn't do well at a high level in these anyway, yet. Senior developers think bigger picture and they use their underlying skills from their past experience that comes with time that make them more valuable in meetings where future planning and security discussions and stakeholder reviews require a talking head for all things technical to non-technical people. So they have soft skills to do this. So how do you learn these soft skills? How do you grow in this area? Well, here's some tips. First, be a reader. Read books on good communication, leadership, and just being successful around other people. These skills can be learned. Some of us think we don't have them. We're awkward, or we get our speech jumbled up every time we talk. Now, I used to be that way. I still struggle with it sometimes, but I'm sitting here in front of a camera talking to you. So you can move past these hurdles, but it takes knowledge and then action to get better at it. Second, start speaking more in your stand-ups. Many of us have the goal of being as quiet as possible. The stand-up's going on, we're muted, and then as it comes to a close, when they're like, all right, everybody, I'll let you get back to work, we start looking around for the mute button, the unmute button, and we get ready, and we click it at the last minute and say, see you guys, that's it. We don't contribute anything. Sure, read books on speaking and problem solving and soft skills and all of that, but more importantly, start making a habit out of being an active participant in these meetings. When things don't feel right, or you have some advice, or you wanna ask questions, even at the risk of sounding stupid, do it. More times than not, it will be a contribution that can often alter 
the planning. People hear your voice, they begin to trust your judgment, your concern, and you learn to speak more and gain wisdom from these open discussions. Third, try this out. Find another junior developer at your company or on your team that wants to also grow. Then practice explaining technical concepts to one another. Talking this terminology out loud and thinking out loud through technical concepts will train your vocabulary and your mind to speak more fluently in this industry. Find a partner, try this out. Fourth, contribute ideas. When you think of features or new processes that may benefit the company, or team speak up about it. What's the worst that can happen? They can say no, but the best that can happen is that others begin to see that you care about the company. You think outside the box and you get the experience of pitching new ideas. And then finally, and listen closely to this, speak solutions and not problems. Don't be a complainer or that person that's always speaking negative. If you mess up, rightfully take the blame, but don't do it shamefully. Do so in a way that offers a path forward from the mess you may be in. Don't criticize, avoid arguments, but more importantly, provide options, never excuses. All right, number three, and you knew it was coming, develop your technical skills. So you developed your soft skills, you're practicing on that, now it's time to develop your technical skills. And this isn't in any order, by the way. These should be done all as you're growing. But in addition to your soft skills, develop your technical skills. You need to not only possess good fundamentals of programming to be a senior developer, but you need to have also a wider breadth of experience in the tooling. And because you have the fundamentals, you don't have to have a deep knowledge of everything because you can read documentation and you can apply your bedrock fundamentals to all of that. But you do need to have an understanding of many things. So a breadth, not a depth. Like you know how to code, and you possess an advanced understanding in it, but you also need to have proficiency in the cloud. A good understanding of security, authentication, Docker, JWT, scaling, CICD, etc. So not only coding, but an understanding of the layers that fall in and around the developer ecosystem. And a lot of this plays into the first point. Over time, you will bump up against all of this technology and security concepts, and you'll eventually learn them anyway. But you can speed up this process by being a continual learner and an active seeker of these technologies. Now, there used to be this course on YouTube to me called the complete junior to senior web developer roadmap that I used to advocate for, for those who want to go from junior to senior. I still do, but it's since moved off of Udemy onto the author's website, which is zero to mastery.io, a site that I really like and a course that I still recommend. But if you look at this, you'll see a number of concepts that you could work through and broaden your scope and skill set faster. So there's a bunch of sections here. There's SSH, there's performance, testing, TypeScript, security, code analysis, Docker, Redis, sessions in JWT, AWS, CICD, and things like that. So it kind of takes the programming world that you live in and expands it out to a greater understanding of a developer ecosystem. Number four, become a decision maker. You want to be a person that can make decisions. Seems like common sense, but it's not. Being a person who can make a call when needed is valuable. Sure, not every call will be right, but the concern is with people that just can't make decisions when the time comes. Even on your lunch break at work, I bet you nobody can decide where to eat, but you can. You can say, hey, let's try out that new ramen place. Try it out. Be the one in your group who can actually decide. Then when things hit the fan at work and somebody has to step up, they're gonna all turn to you. Hey, this guy makes decisions a lot and you'll make a call or you'll offer a solution or you'll do what it takes to get others unblocked. Remember, provide options not excuses, and learn to be a person who can make decisions when needed. So senior developers are busy. Perhaps it's just you and the project manager and a problem comes up. They're not technical, they're looking at you. And if you're like, I don't know, what, what, do, you what do you think we should do? Then they're gonna remember that and they're not gonna think of you as a mid-level or senior level developer, ever. Instead, think then make a decision. Maybe the decision is that someone higher up will have to make the call, but there are many smaller decisions that you will have to make as well. So be that person. And number five, practice daily your interactions with others on the team. Don't be the coding recluse in the corner. This was actually me. I just wanted to code and not really move up into all the meetings and management. And you can see this reflected in some of my early videos. I didn't want to be in the meetings. I didn't want to be in all the business talk. I just wanted to code. But in the end, I think everyone, if they're growing in their craft, will eventually want to move on to the next level. They'll get bored. So here's the alternative. Don't be the recluse in the corner. People will know you for that. Instead, every day, try to interact with your team. Put it on your to-do list. Find others and say, how's your work going? Are you stuck in anything at the moment? How do you feel the project is going? Make yourself memorable by building others up, by equipping others in a way that people see you in that light. Perhaps then when they run into difficulties, they're going to call you over. And eventually people are going to see that and they're going to brand you as a leader. They're going to put you forward as somebody who needs to be moved up to a mid or senior level. So remember these five tips as you aim to move on and move forward past that junior developer title. Be patient with the time in the trenches, develop your soft skills, develop your 
technical skills, become a decision maker, and practice interacting with others on the team daily. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.